Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, and as I sit here now, the start of the 2019 Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships is just five days away. So it's about time we had a look at the decks that could, and probably will, end up taking down the tournament. I'm not going in a strict 1 to 10 list here, but I am going to tell you which are more or less likely to win, and I will give you my top pick at the end, which might surprise you, because I'm going to be honest, it surprised me. Now, something important to note before we start off properly here, this is going to be the weirdest worlds we've ever had. Because firstly, there is a rotation. A whole bunch of sets are rotating out. We are going Ultra Prism on as the tournament starts. And Unified Mind is legal for the first time as the tournament starts. So we've got a new set we've not had before, plus a rotation. Things are getting weird. So my number 10 deck, I'm cheating just a little bit. And I'm going to say something unexpected. There are a bunch of fringe decks like Granbull, which I don't think will win Worlds, but the right player with the right list and the right matchups could. Granbull does 160 for single energy if you can empty out your hand. We could also look at Breloom and Mareep. Mareep sends your opponent's Pokemon to sleep. Breloom does 120 for a single energy. And then, of course, you've got Slumber Forest, which keeps your opponent's Pokemon asleep. Which is kind of nice. Means they've got to flip two heads to wake up. Maybe something like Behem, which stops your opponent playing item cards while doing 90 damage and shuffling itself back into the deck. Maybe something like Slowpoke and Psyduck that lets you discard as many supporter cards in your hand as you like, doing 40 damage for each one you've discarded. You can use Misty's Favor to search for free supporter cards and the Lapras from Unified Minds to get a Misty's Favor back every turn. Or maybe something like Rayquaza Naganadal. Naganadal accelerates energy from the discard pile to itself. Rayquaza then does 30 damage for each energy, lightning or grass, attached to all of your Pokemon. All of those are good decks that could have a good tournament, and we could see something unexpected. So I'm lumping them all in at number 10. Cool. Now, a couple of decks which I think are a bit less likely to win, in at number 9, Zap Beasts. That is to say, Zapdos and Ultra Beasts. Although, remember, we're, I'm numbering them, but we're not doing a strict 1 to 10 here. Zapdos does 80 damage for a single energy if it became active this turn. Plus, you can use stuff like Electro Power to do a bit more damage, and it's a basic that attacks for one energy and only gives up a single prize. And then you combine it with a bunch of Ultra Beasts. Buzzworld does 120 for a single energy as a fighting Pokemon. If your opponent's got four prizes remaining, great against Pikachu and Zekrom. We've got the new Zerkatry that does 120 for a single energy if your opponent has three prizes remaining. We've got Naya Ligo, which does for a single energy if your opponent has two prizes remaining. Pretty much anything you like. You just get to copy an attack of your opponent's Pokemon. It's pretty gosh darn good. Now, maybe people go a little bit more GX heavy than they have in the past, and they choose to go for a list featuring the new Naganadal, the one that lets you discard an Ultra Beast from your hand and draw free cards. But one of the reasons I like this so much is because we don't have great Pokemon search when the rotation hits. We're losing Ultra Ball, Nest Ball, etc. Whereas here, you've got the option of using Ultra Space to search these bad boys out, and that's going to help. Zapdos is harder to search, though. Nominally in at number 8, Gardevoir and Sylveon. Now, Gardevoir and Sylveon, I think, stands less chance than a lot of the other tag team GXs of winning worlds. But it's still a very powerful deck. What you get to do for one energy, you get to just attach two fairy energy to your bench Pokemon in any way that you like. For free energy, you get to do 150. Or, and then move your energy around as you like. And then free energy, 200 damage. If you've got three more fairy energy, your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck. They have a zero card hand, and then you try using cards like Chip Chip Ice Axe to fix the top card of their deck, make it less likely they'll draw out of their predicament. I've seen some really fun lists playing around with Morgan here to try and get the energy on super fast. 
the fact of the matter is, this has the potential to be a really great card, and metal decks just do not look like they're going to be good at world, so you shouldn't be being hit for weakness. Is it fast enough? Does it hit hard enough? Is it good enough at getting the GX attack off early? Arguably not, which is why I don't think it stands as good a chance as some. Reshiram and Charizard is going to be a lot worse at Worlds than it has been since it came out. You've still got Welder, which is very nice for getting your energy. And you're going to have Giant Half, which is going to help. You're still going to have Heat Factory Prism Star to draw some cards. You've still got all the tricks you used to. But more than almost any other deck, this really suffers from the loss of Choice Band. You hit a natural 230. You're not getting a one-hit KO on Pikachu and Zekrom. And that is one of the biggest issues with this deck. Pikachu and Zekrom's a little bit faster. More on that deck in a minute. Pikachu and Zekrom can sustain itself a little bit more easily. But Reshiram and Charizard had the option to get a one-hit KO with Choice Band. Even then, there were plenty of times Pikachu and Zekrom won. But overall, I think this has been a slightly stronger deck. But when you take away Choice Band, it's no longer getting the one-hit KO on Pikachu and Zekrom. So maybe we see some really weird lists playing Shrine of Punishment. I mean, you do have Outrage, so maybe. But then you're playing with Fire, literally and figuratively, on a free prize Pokemon. Eh, that's a risky strategy. The fact of the matter is, this deck is not as good as it was, but you'll still see it being played at Worlds, and you'll still see it doing extremely well when it's there. Nominally in at number six, we've got Dark Box. And generally here, we are looking at Umbreon and Darkrai, and Mega Sableye and Tyranitar. You see, Umbreon and Darkrai is a really fun card for free energy. You do 150 to the active and 60 to a bench GX. Then Mega Sableye and Tyranitar come in, and for five energy, you do 210. But if you take a KO on an EX or a GX, you get to take an extra prize card. So four prizes off a tag team or three prizes off a GX. Sounds pretty good. You've got a really nice pair of GX attacks here. Umbreon and Darkrai. Now, you've got to unfortunately get six energy on there, but you get an instant KO on any Pokemon and trainer lock your opponent, not item lock. That means they can't play any supporters, any items, any stadiums, no nothing. And Mega Sableye and Tyranitar, again, it's an extremely expensive GX attack. But if you've got 10 energy on, you do 250 and discard the top 15 cards of your opponent's deck. If they've got 15 or fewer cards in the deck, you win instantly because they're going to deck out when it goes to their turn. That's pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. You use Naganadal to get a bunch of energy on the field. And then we've got the new Weavile GX to move the Darkness energy around as you like. And generally speaking, once you're attacking with Umbreon and Darkrai, you should be softening up Tag Team GXs to be getting one hit KO'd by Mega Sableye and Tyranitar. And Mega Sableye and Tyranitar will one hit KO a whole bunch of GXs anyway. Make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. This is a new deck, but it is absolutely one to be feared. Now, I'm going to lump all the Malamar decks in together because there are three of them, as far as I'm concerned, that are legitimate contenders for winning the World Championships. So, let's start off with the one that generally doesn't play any GXs. Obviously, with no GXs, you'll be playing Shrine of Punishment. And two of the best GXs you're going to be playing here are Giratina and the new Necrozma. Now, the thing to point out about these Malamar decks is, I'm going to tell you the general three archetypes which I think are the best at Worlds. That does not mean they won't play other Pokemon, and it does not mean that people won't mix these archetypes up and together a little bit. There is nothing to stop your opponent using the non-GX list, but then chucking in one or two Ultra Necrozma, for instance. More on him in a minute. So Giratina for uh, free energy does 130 damage, plus you've got that great ability that puts one damage counter on each of two bench Pokemon when you use the ability to pull it from the discard onto the bench. And then you've got the new Necrozma that for free energy does 160 if you've got a special energy attached to it. 
You play around with cards like Spell Tag to get some extra damage down when you're KO'd. You use Shrine of Punishment. You spread damage around. You get decent attacks with Necrozma and Giratina. And you play the prize race. Malamar accelerates energy from the discard pile to your bench Pokemon. You get all the energy on. And the non-GX version is the one that really tries to go ahead and win the prize race. Cool. The other thing we really need to mention here is that these Malamar decks are all revolving around Psychic and Dragon Pokemon, so they've got Mysterious Treasure. I've already mentioned how difficult it is going to be to search Pokemon in the world's format. It's one of the biggest issues with the world's format, and that is going to give a huge advantage to any deck that can use other Pokemon search like Mysterious Treasure. I mentioned Ultra Necrozma, that's one of the other really good lists here. One of the things about Ultra Necrozma is it can one-hit KO anything. I mentioned how we lose Choice Band. One of the things we're going to see in the new format, the world's format, is that Pokemon that can one-hit KO anything have a huge advantage. Ultra Necrozma, for a minimum one Psychic, one Metal Energy, do 20 damage, discard all your Psychic Energy, and do 80 more for each energy discarded. So if you discard 3 Psychic Energy, you do 260. If you discard 4 Psychic Energy, you do 340. It's not always easy to get enough energy on, and it can make the deck slower than you'd like, but you do have the opportunity to literally one-hit KO absolutely anything, and that is one of the things that is going to make this one of the really big contenders moving forward into the world's format. Over in Japan, there was a world's format tournament held this past weekend, and of the top eight decks, two of them were the Ultra Necrozma list. Interestingly enough, the only decks in top eight that were Malamar were Ultra Necrozma. Read into that what you will. The other deck, and this might be my personal choice for worlds, is Garchomp and Giratina. Garchomp and Giratina doesn't have the infinite damage output that Ultra Necrozma does, but it's a lot easier to get rolling. Garchomp and Giratina, for one Psychic, one Fighting, one Colorless Energy, does 160, but if there's any damage counters on the defending Pokemon, it does 240. Well, the other Giratina we mentioned earlier can easily get the damage on there. That's not a huge problem. And now you're just sitting there hitting 240, except you're not really hitting 240 because they've got damage on. You're hitting at least 250 total, if not a little bit more. I like how easy this is to get rolling. Don't forget we're going to have Viridian Forest, so getting that one-off fighting energy really isn't a huge problem. And you've got a huge amount of potential here with Garchomp and Giratina. Doesn't have the damage output that Ultra Necrozma does, but I do think that this is one of the best choices for Worlds. I'm not saying a Malamar deck is going to win Worlds, but I am saying that I expect to see the top tables littered with Malamar decks. Nominally in at number 2, Blacephalon Naganadal. Now, I've mentioned Naganadal twice already. This is the third time I've mentioned this Naganadal. I expect it to be one of the most important cards at the World Championships. You get to attach an energy of any description, basic, from the discard pile to itself. We've already seen it moved around with Weavar. I've already mentioned it with Rayquaza. But probably the best use for it is Blacephalon. Blacephalon for 2 fire energy does 50 damage times the number of fire energy you lost zone from all of your Pokemon. You've got tricks to get the energy on. We've got B-String and Welder as well as Naganadal, which gives you about the best energy acceleration we've ever seen for one deck. Plus, you've got the aforementioned Ultra Space to go and search out all of your Pokemon here. Or Mysterious Treasure, between the two of them, you, you've got everything. Well, to be honest, it's a very, very largely Ultra Beast deck. But you've also got Mysterious Treasure for your Naganadal line. And you have a Pokemon that, again, has unlimited damage output, which is very important. Is easier to search Pokemon out and get rolling. And it should actually be one of the faster, more consistent decks as well as being one of the hardest hitting. At that tournament I mentioned that just happened in Japan... And I should give a huge shout out to Pokemon Card underscore JP who tweeted out about this and indeed wrote an article translating the results of the tournament. This was a sixth place deck at that tournament. 
But my number one pick for Worlds is Pikachu and Zekrom. Now that tournament in Japan, first place Pikachu and Zekrom. Second place Pikachu and Zekrom. Rounding out the top four were Pikachu and Zekrom and Pikachu and Zekrom. And it even took fifth place as well. The entire top four was Pikachu and Zekrom. Now, one important thing to note, this was one tournament over in Japan, and it might be a different metagame. Pikachu and Zekrom, for me, has been on the edge of, is it the best deck for a while now? But I think seeing results like this really push it over. Firstly, Pikachu and Zekrom has never been a one-hit KO deck. That's not been its MO. It's been a two-hit KO deck, but accelerating energy using full blitz. So it doesn't feel the loss of something like Choice Band as much. You've got Electromagnetic Radar, which makes it easier to search out your Pokemon, not to mention the fact that a lot of decks, this included, are going to play Dedenne for consistency, but you're already playing Electromagnetic Radar, so it's going to be easier to search. You've got Electro Power to do a little bit of extra damage where you need to, allows you to KO Blacephalon, for instance, using the first attack, First attack, incidentally, 150. Search your deck for free lightning energy attachment to one of your Pokemon. That, that's pretty gosh darn good, ladies and gentlemen. And then the GX attack that does 200 to the active, 170 to one of your opponent's bench. That's also pretty gosh darn good. Your opponent needs to be playing something like Mew if they're playing the Dene, or else you're getting an easy KO on a two-prize Pokemon. That's incredibly relevant. But the other thing you have in the world's format is Raichu and Alolan Raichu. It just gives you another option for a really good Pokemon that you can use to kind of flesh out the deck. And you'll see Picarom decks being really a mixture between these two cards. If you're on the bench and became active this turn, you do 160 plus Paralysis. And we're losing Guzma, we're losing Ace Roller, we're losing a lot of the cards that we would expect people to use to get out of Paralysis, which means that this is a format where Paralysis is going to stick way, way better than it has for an extremely long time. The fact that you've got Pokemon Search with Electromagnetic Radar, the fact that Reshiram and Charizard is no longer one hit KOing you, the fact that you've got Raichu and Alolan Raichu means that this, I really believe, is the deck to beat at Worlds. Now, to be fair, Buzzwall is going to be everywhere, and that can get a KO if your opponent has four prizes remaining, but just try and make sure you don't. Use the first attack to take a single KO. Use the GX attack to take two KOs. Oh, look. You're never going to be sitting there on four prizes remaining. If your first KO is a GX, then yes, you're running right into Boswell. So if your opponent plays Boswell, don't do it. There we go. Job done. So those, ladies and gentlemen, are the 10-ish decks that I think could win the World Championships, along with my personal top choice of Pikachu and Zekrom, plus Raichu and Alolan Raichu. I think there's a really, really good chance Pikachu wins Worlds, and isn't that overdue? But I'd like to know what you think. Tell me the decks that you think can win Worlds, and give me your top pick for Worlds in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.